Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Um, okay, I'll be admit, I'll openly admit, I was thoroughly surprised because they sort of limped their way into the playoffs practically. I mean, honestly, they should have been there and, you know, like, they shouldn't have any issues. They should probably have the number one spot, what San Diego was. Uh, and they're probably playing the Braves at this point, or maybe the Diamondbacks, depending. But in any case, they made the playoffs. I was hoping they didn't get San Diego because that long trip would have definitely affected them. We saw what happened in, you know, um, Tuesday's game when they played against uh, Milwaukee. You know, like, they came out hitting. I think they were running on high adrenaline at that point. And that's why when, come Wednesday, I was afraid that if the Mets didn't win and let game two slip, that the momentum that the Brewers had would come into, you know, today, basically. Now, granted, I'll admit that when the Mets basically blew game two, let's be honest, the, 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 the bullpen blew it. Um, I was afraid that because of that, when they the way the Roos came back from that, the fact that you know like this game was getting really close, I was like really surprised that the Mets couldn't get any hits. Um, fortunately, Quintana, I, I was Quintana was like surprisingly really good. I was like really afraid that he was going to give up like a home run here or there, and it was bound to happen, which and unfortunately ended up happening with Budo. Basically, you know the back to back. I mean, I think that threw, threw me off at that point. When it was like the bottom of the eighth, it was back-to-back -back home runs. I'm like, I mean, sorry, bottom of the seventh. I'm like, great. I mean, I don't think this is going to help the Mets, uh, quite honestly, because um, you could see that took a lot out of the Mets. And then when Williams basically came on to the, on the ninth, I was freaking like, all right, this is it. That's pretty much it. And I'm pretty sure the Mets were done. And if you see my tweets, you've seen that I was like calling and I was like, I was done. And that's, I was like, I was like, honestly, I was happy at least the Mets made it into the playoffs because like, this is a this season is a win for the Mets because they've everything from here on everything from the playoffs on has been like icing on the cake basically because the fact that they were able to be over five hundred was my biggest thing basically it's like if they could get over five hundred big win for them basically because like I knew you know Alonzo and Lindor hitting could only going to get you so much without any pitching Mineo was a surprise Severino surprise David Peterson definitely surprised as well too Quinones and Quintanas. Once he starts to settle down, definitely another surprise as well, too. And Miguel with the last six games, I mean, like, honestly, I think he's still kind of like more of a mid-reliever more than anything else. But I was genuinely surprised that the Mets were able to beat the Brewers. And sorry for the Brewer, Milwaukee Brewer fans, but, you know, like, hey, another year bites the dust. But the Mets are now going against the Phillies on Saturday. I don't know how this works out now because... You've already had Serena that pitched on Tuesday. You've had uh, Manea pitching on Wednesday. And you've had Quintanas pitching today as well as David Peterson. So the thing is, you've already pitched four of your starters. And the thing is, Peterson, there's no way he's going to be pitching on Saturday. Quintanas is not pitching on Saturday. Severino on four days rest, I don't think he's pitching. And Manea definitely now on three days rest. So the real question is, like, who is going to pitch that Saturday? And it looks like it might be McGill. Because the fact is, is like the Mets have no other starters at this point. So they're going to have to use them. Blackburn is out, so, you know, they have no choice but to go to Miguel. And my concern is, is Miguel may crumble under the pressure. I mean, quite honestly, Budo is supposed to be that play pitcher that's supposed to lead into being a starter. Like, let's build him up to becoming a starter. The way that the Twins did it with Johan Santana, basically. I mean, like, Santana became lights out pitcher, basically, starting pitcher. After he did, like, a couple of relief, you know, made a couple of years relief pitching. I think with Budo, I think it, I don't want to say it was the wrong decision to, uh, you know, from those that are putting it, you know, putting in uh, Budo on the 7th, but I think you wanted to use him on the 7th and 8th, and then you could get the Diaz on the 9th. Unfortunately, you had to use Diaz in the 8th, and they're like, yeah, you could have used Diaz in the 9th, but the thing is, is like, I think that would have been overkill at that point. I'm not overkill, but it would have been too much for Diaz. I think he would have crumbled on the press. The fact that he got out of the 7th and 8th inning, it was like, okay, that's great. So the only thing you hear of this is like what happens on Saturday. And like you're relieving your bullpen is kind of a little bit tired per se. And unfortunately, you don't have anyone else as your starter. I mean, do you pitch Severino on four days rest? I don't think that will work out for him. I mean, ideally, he's done really well, decent with the Phillies. Manez as well, too. Peterson, not so much. But it's always been no, you know, no decisions practically or like at least he's barely got the win. But quite honestly, I think... This is something where I don't know what, what's going to happen. 
I mean, I'm like I said, I'm just thrilled that the Mets actually got past the wild card round because, quite honestly, I didn't think they were going to get far. Even if they made the wild card, they weren't going to get far because of this pitching staff. But the pitching staff is locking down. I mean, I'm hoping it's a repeat of last year and the year before with the Phillies and the Diamondbacks, where they can this can propel them into the World Series. But the likelihood of, likelihood of that happening, let's be honest, it's not happening. Even if the Mets were able to get past the Phillies, they're not getting past the Dodgers. I will ideally. This is what this is my ideal situation. The Mets get past the Phillies. I want the I want the Padres. I want the Padres. Not more so because of the fact they'll be easier to play against against the Dodgers versus the Dodgers. But more so the fact is like I want retribution. I want my revenge. I want the revenge with the Mets. I want them to take out the uh, the Padres in the NLCS. Basically, if, if it comes down to the NLCS between the Mets and the uh, Padres, I want the Mets. I want the Padres, and I want the Mets to kill them. And then what I want in the World Series, quite honestly, revenge again. I want the Royals. I want the Royals in the World Series because I want that revenge. Because like in 2015, I thought for sure we could have gotten that, but the Royals, you know, showed our weakness. The defense wasn't that great behind the pitcher outside of the pitchers basically i'm like once the pitchers makes mistakes that's it. and the, the mets hitting wasn't that it wasn't there you put out sedania that's it and the unfortunate part is in this situation lindor definitely definitely deserves to be an mvp i mean without lindor the mets are not in the playoffs without lindor we're not winning we're not winning against the Rays and getting into the wild card without lindor we're not winning against the words like let's be honest lindor three for four for today's game Everyone else was pretty much sucking at that point. Uh, Alonzo decidedly finally showed up in the ninth inning. Thank you, but you know, like, should have been there for the past couple, past couple of games as well too. I'm hoping and I'm praying that because of this home run by Alonzo, that this helps him out of that sort of playoff slump, and he does really well. Because my thought was, it's like, well, it was, it's still well known that. If Lindor goes, the offense goes. But the problem is Lindor can't do it on his own. And so I was hoping for sure that maybe Vientos would like break out, but he didn't either. And it was kind of sucky. Um, yeah, it, it's hard to say. I, would you had would I have had J, JD Martinez in there? Possibly, but I don't know. He's you know kind of streaking now. So I think you need that veteran leadership in the dugout to help him with the rest of the team, basically. But um, I don't know. With that. I'll leave it at that. Uh, let me know your thoughts. What do you think the Mets can do? Do you think the Mets can beat the Phillies? Uh, it'd be great if they can. I mean, I'd love to actually watch people, you know, watch it live with some people. If you're in the Orange County area, I'd love to meet up in some bar and just watch it, basically. We can watch the series. Uh, but with that, I'll leave it at that. Again, leave it in the comment in the comment section. I do read all my comments and I do respond to them. I also ask that if you, you hit the like button. Um, it kind of helps me focus on what content I should focus on, like sports or, you know, as you've seen in this channel, sports, uh, movie reviews and such, basically, or baseball or, you know, F1 and football. Uh, and also, I ask that, you know, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't hit, if you haven't subscribed. Uh, the more subscribers, the more better it is for me and for everyone else. And I'll try to put more, more relevant content at that point as well, too. But with that, I'll leave it at that. Unfiltered, unedited, and of course, always unrehearsed. Until next time.